Um, I have a really bad echo, and let me just make sure y'all aren't hearing that. You shouldn't be. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm a little bit late getting started today um, because there were some uh, slight hedgehog-related mishaps. Uh, so I, I had him out of his cage while I was getting set up just so he could like get some time hanging out and be awake when I was uh, making weird noises and he knew what was going on. And uh, I was getting everything set up and he really likes my headphones for some reason and he just like started going at them. So now they have like tiny little hedgehog teeth marks on it. I think it's fine. Like I, they weren't plugged in. There wouldn't be any electricity and he didn't like eat anything. Uh, but then I had him in his in my lap while I was um, finishing getting set up and then I looked down and I was like, oh, Gustav. Uh, and and he pooped my pants <sighs> and everything's fine now and it's all cleaned up and there, there are no poopy pants to be seen, but um, I am a tiny bit late <laughs> on account of that. And let me super quickly tweet that I am on because usually I do that. Ooh. That is not a good sound. Uh, usually I do that before I get going, but uh, today I was cleaning pants. Okay, so today we are going to be continuing to work on the project that we were working on previously. So not last week, which was Q&A, or the week before that, which was the um, relaxed word movers distance, but like two, two weeks, before, three weeks ago, I guess. Um, it's been a minute. And we were working on this Twitter replication study. And if you are watching on Twitch, the link should be in the little Twitch thing. And if you're watching on YouTube, the YouTube link should also be in the little uh, underneath bit. The comment section, I guess? No, not the comment section, like the, the video description. There we go. Uh, okay, tweet, check. Code, check. Other code, check. Um, yes. So one thing I want, do want to do before we started off is to show you guys sort of the results in progress of a Twitter poll I did. So this this project I'm doing with getting um, with reproducing these specific research papers is sort of in service of a larger project about um, what it means to do reproducible research and starting to develop best practices based on. Um, you know, having done it <laughs> a lot, because um, I've done, you know, I've done a lot of the uh, uh, the research side of things, and I haven't done as much just like sitting down and trying to reproduce other people's work. So that's what the the missing piece for me uh, is really just spending a lot of time like going through and um, and seeing what other people's work is like to reproduce. Uh, and I did a poll on Twitter, uh, which is sort of ongoing, um, asking people. <laughs> Uh, if they did research what they expected people to spend the most time on while they were reproducing the research and then what people actually spend the most time on uh, and just sort of looking at the disconnect there because i had going in a pretty strong hypothesis that, this, that there was going to be a mismatch here um, and interestingly it looks like there is but not in the way that i thought um, so it looks like make this a little bigger it's a little bit small for y'all uh, so it looks like researchers expect people, oops, somebody else just voted, uh, expect people to spend the most time understanding code and then looking at data and then getting the environment ready. Um, and then just sort of people who want to see the results. And uh, people who have reproduced research uh, spend the most time understanding the code, so there's sort of consensus there, uh, and then getting the environment ready and then looking at the data. So the data is actually sort of the thing that takes people the least time. Uh, and what is really notable to me is that about twice as many people who are reproducing the research say getting the environment ready is the most time consuming thing and only 9%. Uh, well, it's not quite because we have to sort of chuck this particular fourth result, show results slash other. Uh, but yeah, so people don't spend as much time looking at the data as researchers think they're going to, and they spend way more time getting their environment ready, which really gels with my findings so far. Oh, and I think this person replied to me. Uh, so I can't see who voted what, and this person said, uh, when I say long, I actually mean forever, especially when you're not too sure if it's something wrong with the IDE or if it's just me mistyping uh, or space or missing a comma. Uh, and it, that's the environment that's the problem. Uh, yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, okay, so they, they actually voted for understanding, but yeah, the environment is a huge problem. And I'm actually just gonna respond to this person right now so I don't leave them hanging. Uh, oh man, I hear you. Getting the environment set up takes forever. Uh, uh, I've spent so much of my life just futzing around with drivers. You would not believe the number of hours I've spent futzing around with drivers. And I'm not a hardware person, like that's not my background. Uh, and just having to do it to be able to get things to um, work is awful. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna take my earrings off because they're hitting my headphones and annoying me. Let us begin. So the first thing I wanna do if you watch the first two parts, you may recognize this big uh, file of all the things that all the all the uh, supplementary code that was provided by the uh, the authors. And again, let me zoom in because it's a little bit small. Uh, and this is an R. The the last project I did is in Python. Uh, and I have here a beautiful notebook uh, that is the work I've done so far on replicating the results of this paper. Uh, and let's actually take a look at the notebook. Uh, oh, and wait for that to load. It may take a bit. It. Hmm. I think this might actually be easiest. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's this weird error where like they're getting HTML garbled, and I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. Um. Hmm. Well, we'll figure it out later. Anyway. Uh, the things that I have done so far are picked specific figures that I'm interested in replicating and then go through and replicate them. Um, so that is uh, like figures like graphs. So that shows that I have gotten sort of the same shape of the data as the original authors. And then also um, for the statistical testing uh, tables and seeing if I can get the same results in my tables. Uh, so just to go over what we've done so far, uh, I don't actually think we need all these libraries. Um, I'm gonna go through once I'm, I'm done and sort of do a little bit of decrofting and remove libraries that aren't, uh, aren't actually called in the text. And uh, it might be, it might actually be useful during committing and run to have like, not error messages, but like warning messages, like you import this library, but you never use it. I wanna say we have that in Python. Well, I don't know, I'll look into it at some point when I'm not on camera. Uh, and then we read in this data. So the thing that for me has been most uh, sort of, like it's not, like I don't wanna dunk on the authors. Um, it's a good paper. I think it's an excellent analysis. I've enjoyed reading it. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that they made their code and their data available, but there are some things that sort of caused extra friction for me, so made it a little bit more difficult than it would have been otherwise to um, really run through uh, the paper and get the same results that they did. And one of the things is that uh, the data that they shared had gone through all the pre-processing, but in their code, the pre-processing and the analysis are sort of... Um, Oh, I think this is the one I want. Uh, sorry, I've been looking for this plot and I think it was just the very last plot in the thing. Um, anyway, sorry, in this script, the pre-processing and the code, the analysis code are sort of interleaved. So you see both. So you see a little bit of pre-processing, a little bit of analysis, a little bit of pre-processing, a little bit of analysis. Well, I guess at that point, it's not pre-processing, it's data manipulation. And the problem with that is to get the same results as their analysis, I sort of have to like reverse engineer from the nice tidy code that they provide that's gone through all the pre-processing and, and data manipulation and stuff. Uh, manipulation in the sense of like moving it around, not in the sense of like making up values. I'm, I'm not saying that they made up values. Uh, so that's the thing in this project that's probably been the roughest for me. Uh, so you'll see as I go through that there were a lot of things that I had to do that were sort of 
rewinding the data set to the point where it was where they did the particular analysis I'm trying to reproduce at that point. Um, so that's a, you know, and not like a, a show shop or anything, but it is like a little bit uh, frustrating for me as a reproducer. Uh, you'll also notice, ooh, oh, that was a bad sound, sorry. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm using uh, equal signs for assignment throughout. Uh, this is just what they're doing and I'm just sort of, um, you know, kicking it with their style guide, even though it is not the style guide that I prefer. Uh, so yeah, and that's not, that's not a reproducibility issue. That's just, they, you know, there's sort of a island effect, I guess you would say, uh, in terms of, let me close this so I'm not seeing the notifications. Um, in terms of the financial world, really uses R in a different way from uh, sort of the, the parts of R that I'm more familiar with and the parts of the community I'm more familiar with. So that's, a, that's just an interesting sociological difference. Uh, so uh, reading in all the libraries, we may not need all of them. One of them we actually had to add and there's little directions on how to do that, but I just went to settings uh, and I just added the custom package and then that was added to my Docker image. Ooh. I'm not, I'm not going to touch any of those. Um, and that was the first section. So what we hadn't gotten up to in the last stream was actually reproducing the figures. Ooh, and that was a bad sound as well. Sorry guys. Uh, so the first figure I was interested in reproducing was this one. Uh, and if you'll remember from, I think, the second stream, like I was trying to get there and I wasn't quite getting there and I was pretty confused. Um, and I did figure out how to get there. Um, so it was actually mostly based on their uh, provided information. The big difference was uh, the, the code that they provided only looked at part of the data frame and to get the figures that were shown in the paper, I had to do the whole data frame. Um, and actually, let me add that to my comments here. Is that the figures in the paper use all of the data provided by the authors, not just a specific date? Uh, I also needed to do some like prettifying, so, you know, adding some themes and some maxis and colors and whatnot, um, which isn't in the, um, the code provided by the author. So it's just not quite exactly the same. Um, I should run all these. So it's just not quite exactly the same uh, code that they're using, but I did get more or less the same results. And we can see that in my little kind of fuzzy, side-by-side uh, -side figure here. So here is the figure from the paper, and here is the figure that I made uh, and that the code for is right here. Oh, did I forget to um, just do that? Um, GG Arrange is the only uh, function I'm using from the GG Pubber package, so I'm, I'm doing, what's it called? Just-in-time loading, inline loading? Uh, so I'm just, when I am using the GG range function, I am specifying that it's from the GG Pubber package instead of in the current global namespace. Okay, and that should work. Yeah, so here's the reproduced figure. Uh, this is what the original looked like, and you can see we're pretty close. So the second thing I did was I reproduced this table, uh, which has various uh, time series. Uh, so this is sort of calmness, this is tone, and these are different measures they are using of the sentiment of the Twitter data that they cannot share. Um, that is one of the big things with this project uh, because of the, the license that they have the Twitter data under, they can't just share the Twitter data. So they can share summary statistics and like, um, you know, measures derived from that data. And that's what we're using here. Uh, and then these are different types of normalization functions. And then we just have for each time series, we have some uh, descriptive statistics. And then we also have this augmented Dickey Fuller test P value. Uh, and the Dickey Fuller test is to determine whether or not your time series has a unit root. Uh, so I've, I've learned a lot about time series in this particular project. 
Um, and the difference seems to be that if your time series has a unit root, it's generated by some sort of um, stochastic process. So if we have a time series and it's sort of like generally going up and then there's a big sharp change to the time, to the time series. So let's say it's the, oh, what's a time series? Uh, growth rate of grass. Uh, and it's sort of like generally growing up and then you mow it and the growth rate sort of goes down and it doesn't return to where it was. It sort of like stabilizes around the new local minima or whatever it is. And this is opposed to a time series where the grass is growing and then you mow it and then it goes straight back up to where it was and it sort of continues along the previous trend line. Um, and that would be a not a stochastic process. It's got a name and I've immediately forgotten it. Uh, anyway, so this test is just telling us, yep, sure enough, there's some sort of, there isn't in an underlying stochastic process here. There isn't a unit root. Uh, so to get these, I could use mostly the code that they did. So this normalize function here is the, uh, you can see the Z or, is that a Z? Funky Z. Uh, and the, the funky Z here, so where K equals one and K equals 10, these are normalized using a different, um, uh, a different value for K here. Uh, and this is just the function that is used to normalize them. And then uh, we generate those normalized sequences and I get the basic statistics. Uh, and you can see that there's a lot more basic statistics generated than are actually reported. So they don't report like skew or kurtosis or any of those things. Um, so then I just went through and I <laughs> looked at the table up here and then I looked at the table down here with my eyes and I got the um, row indexes in order of each of the rows that's in the table above. Uh, and that gives us the subset of the table that is uh, in the same order that is presented in that figure. And where's the rest of my code? Hmm, there should be a lot more right there that just isn't there right now. Um, and then the other thing I had to do was get this augmented Dickey Fuller P test value. And um, I, I did. And you can't see it, but I promise it's there. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I didn't commit my other notebook. I bet that's it. All right, let me check real quick on my phone. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so that's sort of the second figure that I've reproduced. Um, I don't think I've done these yet. Yeah, these are sort of uh, where I'm at at this point. And I may have to leave and then compile the notebook with my other account and then come back and check this one again. Uh, and let me just double check. Yeah, so the thing that I would really like to do uh, today from this particular, um, let's try running all of these again now that I've added the uh, the correct information so that it'll run correctly. Um, oh, right, I forgot about these. I also failed to replicate these figures and I'm not entirely sure why. And actually this one looks better than the other one that I had earlier in my other notebook. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly compile the current version of my notebook in my phone. Can I? Um, yeah, so I, I had a hard time recreating the autocorrelation plots in, well, I got autocorrelation plots that like had the same text on the axes and whatnot, uh, but did not have the same shape in the data. So I think there's a step I'm missing in terms of like, uh, what would I call it? There's, there's an extra like transformation of the data that I just didn't do and couldn't figure out how to do. But the thing I really, really want to do today, uh, let's 
see if I can find the link to the paper. I don't think they have it in here, do they? It might be in the appendix. The thing I'm really interested in looking at is the plot that they have, that's sort of like the clincher, uh, that shows that there is interrelationship between the stock market and the um, uh, sort of like summarization of the uh, sentiment. And it looks like it's not shy of the... I do want to read the article. And it is, I think it's like figure 3.9 maybe. Uh, it's definitely not that one. Yeah, these ones, 3.8 and 3.9. Hey, I was right. Uh, so you can see basically that there's no relationship here. Um, so that when, you know, one goes up, the other one doesn't also go up. When one goes down, the other doesn't necessarily also go down. Uh, and there's sort of a, You know, there's sort of a, um, not a strong relationship between these series. If there was a strong relationship, we'd expect them to sort of pattern together and look sort of like, um, I don't know, tire tracks of a car where there's sort of like, there's a, a static relationship between them. Uh, and it just doesn't seem to be the case that that is what's happening here. Uh, so I really want to be able to create this Ardle model. And we're going to see if I can do it. And let me double check on my phone to see if it's finished compiling. Okay, so this version does have all the things that I would expect it to have. Uh, and it also has me be failing to be able to, uh, oh my gosh, I just want to hit the commit and run button, but it's too small and my little fingers, my little fingers can't do it. Okay. So the thing I'm interested in doing is finding these Ardell models. Let's see if we can find them in the code. I've just been sort of working through top to bottom, but there's so many figures in this paper that I doesn't, I don't know that it makes sense for me to try and do every single one of them. A R T L. All right. Horse race. Okay, so this is the this top one of this set of matched plots. All right. And we need to have lin pred d, lin pred d x, non lid pred d, non lid pred, non linear predictions d, non linear predictions d x. Hmm. Where are those calculated? So they're used here, so they must be calculated above. Nope. Okay, here we go. Uh, so here's predicting. So we need to build the model. All right, so this is the, this is like the interesting part of the paper. And I'm just gonna scooch back on out here and come back on in and hopefully, last one two days ago, what about one minute ago maybe? <coughs> Excuse me. make sure I didn't have any errors. Yeah, there we go. And now if we scroll down, we should be able to see um, all of the getting of the p-values. Excellent. You can see the before and after. And well, I don't know if you guys can see. Um, it's not your screen, so the figure's a little bit fuzzy. Oh, I might need to figure out how to do this as a vector so it's less bad. Um, you can see the numbers are the same in these two, so like 1.15, 1.155, uh, and these are these are rounded, so they're going to be a teensy bit different. Uh -huh. And I was working on this table, which I'm fine uh, skipping because it's just sort of like exploratory regressions. I'm really interested in the modeling part. Uh, and here's the figure I had a hard time reproducing. Yeah, so these are, this is the figure I generated and you can compare it to 
the figure I generated to the figure they generated, and they do seem to be fairly different, and I'm not entirely sure what is causing that difference. So allow us to edit this notebook and continue our work. That's gonna take a minute to initialize. So we're really interested in these Ardle models. And these are the, uh, things, whatchamacallit. Okay, so these are training. It's a formula, carrot. Okay. Okay, so to get to there, we're going to need the training data, which has lags. It's so like one before or one after, after I guess, uh, of the Dow Jones Industrial Index, and also the um, uh, the mood measurement that they're using. <laughs> the importing carrot again. Uh, Okay, so I've done up to here, and I am interested in sort of getting from here downwards. Uh, so we're gonna do a little bit of copy and paste. I have a strong feeling that this is going to already be kind of a problem for us, because I don't think we have this tone min column available to us. Um, I might see if I can't find the tone min first. Well, first let's run it. First let's run it. Let's do that very, very first and see if that helps. Oh, it's thinking to itself. All right, and let's run all the cells. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, Jake Fonder Posse's best advice for reproducibility with notebooks is make sure you restart and run all the cells from the top and that you get the output that you expect to get. Let me just double check from... Oh, interesting. I got different results here than I got previously. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Hold up. Where's all my... Where'd the rest of my code go? Oh, is this a thing where I have to... Okay. I think what I have to do is go to versions. Say that I want this one. And then maybe fork this one? Because I'm not the original author. All right, let's try that. So I'm gonna fork this one. I'll be honest, our like control flow uh, for Okay, there we go. Uh, our control flow for ooh, version control could use a little work. It's something. It's something that's definitely on the engineering team's uh, radar, as it were. Okay, so the thing that I think we're going to need to do first, if we really do need this, um, oh, it's further up this. It's the horse race, right? Oh, no, that just says horse race in the middle. Okay, here we go. Do we need, oh my goodness. <sighs> Do we need the tone.min or can we just use tone? Because I think the data set that we're provided has tone and not tone.min. And I don't really know where that's coming from. 
Let's try just these. Let's see if just this works. Uh, let's give ourselves some some breathing room. I'm just gonna make a bunch of empty cells at the bottom uh, so I can scroll down and see everything good. Okay, uh, and let me give myself a, oh my gosh, horrible sounds. Uh, let me give myself a helpful title, fake here, 3.9. Warning, blah, 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 on invalid time series parameters specified. Let's check out full sample.ts because my intuition, which like I can't, uh, let's do the first row, uh, double check. Like the, my intuition, um, oh, hi. Uh, Jalbana says hello. My intuition is that we are missing one of the columns and that's what we have a problem with. Let's see. Lag, full sample.ttest. Oh, okay, so it's the very first one that we have problems with. Hmm. What if I did this instead? Will that fix it? It did not. Okay. The condition is length greater than one. Only the first element will be used. TSP attribute must be numeric of length three. Okay. Oh my God, that's gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna be right back and turn off the, the whooshing machine. All right, I'm back. There should be no more whooshing. Uh, we have a dehumidifier, and I thought I had turned it off, but apparently not, because it just kicked on. Uh, okay. Error in attribute XTSP. So we have to have fewer than three tablespoons of attribute. Ooh, excuse me. Hmm. Let's check out this lag function. See what it can tell us. Oh, I probably should have used just the one. What if no? Okay, it's from data.table. Class lead slash lag for vectors or lists. A vector list data frame or data table. Non negative integer vector denoting the offset to lead or lag the input by. To create multiple lead lag vectors, provide multiple values to n. Okay, so what's k? Nothing. k is nothing. Um, Okay, so the problem is that this should be n instead of k. I think it is also possible that we should not be using a data.table function for this and that they intend for us to use something else. Hmm. Okay. Maybe if I do it this way, because I don't think it wants 
a data frame. I think it wants a vector. So if I give it a vector, i.e. a column of a data frame instead of the entire data frame, okay, full data, merge, lags, mood lags. Ugh, I hate, and this is just like completely aesthetic. I don't like variable names with periods in them. It confuses me on account of also Python, and in Python, the period is semantic. Like you wouldn't just put it in a name. I know it's the it's in the Google R language style guide, and I dislike it. It's not my favorite. But that does, that's not like a problem with the code. That's just like a uh, your bathroom is lavender. I hate lavender. It's nothing. It's completely aesthetic references. Hmm. Okay, so we're doing pretty good until we got to here. Undefined columns selected. No, okay, that didn't work. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, that's gonna be an error because I didn't complete my square brackets. Nope, okay, that didn't work either. Let's check out this complete cases. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why this, why this weird problem with the code is arising. I don't think, hmm. Hmm. I should not have done this much. Don't, stop running it. Stop running it. None more. Oh, did I crash it? <sighs> I crashed the kernel. Um, if you try and print out too much text from a from a operation, you will crash the kernel. I'm not sure why I'm having to make these changes to the code. It could be. Uh, it could be that there was a version change and that broke the code. Because I'm assuming that the code that they uploaded to GitHub ran on their machines. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that these are, you know, very competent programmers and that it's not that they're just like, they wrote code would don't work. I, I don't think that's the case. I think that there's some difference between here and now that's making it difficult for us to run the code. And I don't know what that difference would be. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Mm. Every week I'm like, I'm gonna move it from Friday afternoon. <gasps> oh no, did I lose my code? This, is, this has never happened to me before. Well, don't crash your kernels, kids. Actually, that's a bug, that should not be happening. It should be, I can go back and watch the footage, but as long as I wasn't seeing, um, a warning sign here it should not have not saved uh, okay well let's do it again I guess figure figura figure 3.9 uh, and we can remember what we did I it must be differences in the version it can't be like differences in OS right I mean it could be but I just I don't think it is Okay, so our difference is, is that this is not called K, this is called N, but that's just like a weird mistake to make. So it must be like the, the package has changed. Uh, keeping referring to tone min when that's not a thing, that's definitely like, that's a, that's a problem with reproducibility. Uh, well, I guess it's, it is causing problems in the, in the reproducibility. Uh, Jalbana asks, is it better to create a kernel or work on local machine? Um, it depends. I, so for this project where we have like, I don't know, uh, 30 <laughs> libraries we're loading in, if you don't have these installed locally, I think it's easier to um, use a kernel because you don't have to download and install a bunch of stuff. Uh, and I am constantly wrestling with dependencies. It is my, God, anything that relies on the like Java R integration is just like, 
if you have to install one of those, kicks your afternoon goodbye. Uh, and I, I should say that could be a function of the fact that I work on Linux, um, which is very good for the things it's very good for and very, very difficult for the things it's not very good for. Uh, so that is, you know, potentially there's a survivor or, you know, environment effect there. Uh, yeah, it depends. I like kernels. If you want to share your work, it's definitely easier to do a kernel because then when you're done, you can just make it public and then anybody can look at it, which is nice. Look at it and more importantly, run it. Uh, let's see. Take a look at this. We were, oh my gosh, <laughs> we were yawning. Okay, oh, okay, so these should be the rows and we need to take any column. Undefined column selected. The, what? No, it should just be all the columns. Hmm. Yeah, rows with their right, and then all the columns. I'm not entirely sure what the, the problem with this is. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is perfectly fine. I don't know why I'm getting an error with it. Hmm, weird. Let's just try copying and pasting this code that we know works, I guess. Undefined column selected. Oh. The error is not there. It is down here. <laughs> well then. Uh, D4 to dim full complete data. Error in names must be same length as Hmm. I think. Hmm. Hmm. I think there's a problem with our data shape. <laughs> Okay, so we have two columns. And at this point, the column names are 11 long. So let's, let's just look at this. I think that merge is not the right. Oh, sorry. I think that merge is not the right function to use here. you guys can hear that there's a very bad collie that lives in my building he's very pretty and he's very sweet and he's so barky and there's a there's sort of like kitty corner to him there's a window that a cat likes to sit on and just like look out at people uh the dog hates the cat all the all the hot gossip from my apartment building hmm I think we want to make this into a 
matrix or data frame with five columns, this into a matrix or data frame with five columns, uh, C bind them, so bind them as columns. And then add, oh my goodness, this uh, D dot DJIA. I don't know what this like subsetting is. Mm. Let me double check the complete dot full data, make sure it doesn't already do what I think it does. I don't think it does. Okay, yeah, it 100% does not. Okay, so we want to turn this into a matrix. And uh, we want n call to be five. Well, let's say we do the first ten. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I want it to be one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. I want this to be two rows of five each. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, R three matrix specify number of columns. Yeah, that's what I used. Do I need to specify the number of rows? I think I need to specify the number of rows. Interesting. Okay, and it looks like as dot data frame is faster than data dot frame. Actually, I don't think. <sighs> Excuse me. I don't know that these are data frames. Let's see what the uh, let's see what the the data type of this is. And I want to be careful about uh, the data types that I use because this is going to rely on a lot of, okay, so it is a data frame. Uh, I want to be careful about the data types that I use because down the road it's going to be pretty um, important that I give the functions that I'm going to be using later on the type of data that they expect, otherwise I'm going to get weird errors. Is it? Yeah, it's length. Land is Python. Uh, DJIA. <laughs> length of Djibouti. <laughs> Divided by five. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> this should be two. Okay, that also didn't work. Our factor two matrix specify number of rows. just that will get you the number of rows but that's not what I'm interested in maybe I need to tell it by row
Maybe I need to tell it matrix rather than as matrix. Oh, not number of rows, but number of row. Ayy, okay. So you need to make a matrix rather than casting a vector as a matrix. Does this work with all of the data? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Uh, and then casting that as a data frame, which as we discovered on Stack Overflow should be slightly faster than making it data dot frame. Okay. And this should be the same thing, but everywhere it says DJIA, it should say mood. And then we want to C bind. Let's double check this. Um, maybe I don't actually need to say the number of rows. Maybe it'll just sort of happen. Well, no, it didn't. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, So it looks like the thing we're having problems with Also, that's not good either. I don't want that either. Hmm. Does just the matrix look good? No, the matrix does not look good either. It did look good like just now, right? Am I making that up? I'm very confused. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Well, no. Also, that didn't work. That's data frame. I just end call, end row. End call, end row. Length, DJ, five, yes. Okay, let's, I guess, let's try this and see what that looks like. I could have sworn it was working fine like a minute ago. Yeah, oh no, okay, okay, that looks good and normal, I guess. This is what I'm expecting. See what the dimensions of those are. See what the dimensions of the mood lags are. All right, 57 by 5, 57 by 5. That's what I'd expect.
let's take a look at this and see if we have something that looks reasonable. Hmm. Well, somehow I have deleted all my columns. So that's not ideal. Oh, it's because we don't have that many rows. We have no idea how long this is. So we only have 57 rows, and it looks like they have at least 324 rows, plus however many are in the test set. But we don't know how many of those there were. So I'm thinking now, so we don't know a priori what data was in the test set, what data was in the training set, and we do need to know that if we want to uh, accurately recreate the figures from the paper uh, and to even train models that are going to have the same qualities as the model used in the paper. I don't know, based on what I have so far, that I'm going to be able to do that. Let's take a look at fullsample.ts and like where we made it. I might not be able to reproduce these figures based on what I have right now. <sighs> okay. Yeah, uh, where were you created? Tell me your secrets. Okay, so these are from specific time periods in this time series. And I know that not all of that data was shared with us. Uh, so let's say 2007 to 2008. And let's look at the, the data itself which is in here, and it's, let's see, 2007 2007 719 is the first date in the full data set, and it's the first date in our data set, so that's good. And then the last date is I think the quickest way to do that is actually going to be, nope, I want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'm bad at clicking right now, apparently. Uh, so I think the best way to see what that looks like is to look at the tail, and I don't remember what I called it. Did I just call it data? I think I did. No, I didn't. I called it something else. Twitter data. That's more descriptive, and also not the name of a function. Uh, Twitter. 2008-12-31 is the last that we have. So it looks like, which is 532 rows. And it looks like these numbers, 1 through 323, 150 through 323, are the same as, they're not, they're different. Okay, so we don't know what dates these are supposed to be. And we don't know 
Oof. And after this point, we further manipulated the data frame. I'm just going to stare at it as if it can tell me something. And I don't think it can. All right, where's the first time I do this in this notebook? Was I able to accurately reproduce a figure after I made this data set? No. Okay, so it's possible that, so this is the original code. It's not gonna work for us. Instead, we created a data set that should have the same qualities based on the actual date rather than the row indexes because the row indexes aren't the same between the data that was available to the researchers at that point in their research and the uh, data that was provided to us. I think I'm going to do some more reading and digging. I may not be able to reproduce this part of the paper. Um, I'll, I'll try. I'll try my darndest. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, woof. Uh, <laughs> that's sort of a Debbie Downer thing to end to end today on. Um, hmm. Don't subsection your data by the row indexes. Subsection it by a quality of the data set and then share data that has that quality. And uh, yeah, that's my that's my big takeaway. Otherwise, people are not going to be able to to replicate your work. And I'll, mm, mm. I'll keep working. I'll keep plugging away on this uh, during the week next week. Well, not a whole bunch. We got a bunch of events that are happening, but woof. Okay, maybe this will have a happy ending eventually. But it's very possible that it's just not going to have a happy ending, which I'm I'm really bummed about. This is a really cool paper. And again, not dunking on the authors. Great work. Really admire it. Don't think I'm going to be able to get uh, the same model that they did because I don't think I have the same data. Mm. Okay, well, let's commit and run so I can at least see what I got to, got up to today. Um, I will call it a day, I think, because it's, yeah, it's 5-5. Five, five. Uh, and I hope you guys have a really good weekend. And if it's summer where you are, are getting to be summery enjoy the enjoy the weather and if it's not also enjoy that i guess uh and i will talk to you guys next week thanks for joining bye